I'm trying to figure out where I went wrong in life. Could it have been doing high school theater? Nah. Live streaming over at twitch.tv slash triceratops underscore junior? Nah, that can't be it either. Huh. I know what it was. It was playing Madagascar on the Nintendo GameCube. Just like every animated movie in the 2000s, Madagascar got a video game. This was one of the very first games I ever got on my GameCube, and I have really fond memories of playing the first four levels on repeat because I could never beat the fifth. But one day, it all went away when I sold my copy to GameStop for three nickels and a paperclip. Recently though, while exploring a local game store, I saw a copy and I thought, what the hell, might as well buy it. And well, here I am now. Approximately four hours later, game beaten, and a whole lot sadder. It's not that I had high expectations for the game. In fact, I set the bar extremely low. It's more so the fact that I now have to look back at my childhood self in shame. Why the fuck did I think this was a good game? Madagascar the Game is a video game retelling of the first Madagascar film. So if you know the plot of the movie, you know the plot of the game. But for those who don't know, and honestly, if you're watching this and you've never seen Madagascar, I'm so, so sorry for bringing this into your life. I will now give a brief plot description of the movie. Welcome to the Central Park Zoo. Just smile and wave, boys. Today we're gonna blow this dump. Marty, voiced by Chris Rock, is a zebra at the Central Park Zoo in New York City. On his 10th birthday, he has grown bored with zoo life and wants to get out and see the world. He learns of a plot by the penguins to flee the zoo and decides to follow them. Marty's friends, Alex the Lion, voiced by Ben Stiller, Gloria the Hippo, voiced by Jada Pinkett Smith, and Melman the Giraffe, voiced by David Schwimmer, follow Marty because they are worried about him. They run through the streets of New York, causing panic, and finally catch up to Marty at Grand Central Station. Here, the cops catch them and tranquilize them. The plan is to ship the four animals by sea to a wildlife preserve in Kenya, but things go awry when the penguins hijack the ship and accidentally spill the animals overboard, where they wash up on the island of Madagascar. So that's the premise of the movie. But how does that translate into the game? About as well as you'd probably expect. To get Madagascar the game, take the plot of the movie, and then replace all the famous actors with decently famous voice actors doing impressions of the famous actors, and then add a lot of repetitive fetch quests, janky platforming, and a terrible camera. Honestly, that pretty much describes every single game based off of a 2000s animated film. The game is made up of 11 levels representing different parts of the movie. There are also three mini-games, but I'm saving the best stuff for last. Since 11 levels is quite a few, I'm not going to describe them all fully. Instead, I'm going to describe each of them in five words that perfectly sum up the level. Level 1, King of New York. Tutorial, learn to play game. Level 2, Marty's Escape. Sneaky Zebra sneaks from zoo. Level 3, New York Street Chase. Accurate representation of New York. Level 4, Penguin Mutiny. Penguins hijack big ass ship. Level 5, Mysterious Jungle. Lion spiders platforming, oh my. Level 6, Save the Lemurs. Bullshit wind tunnels are bullshit. You saved me, Excelsior! Level 7, Jungle Banquet, Fetch Quests and Horny Boar. Level 8, Coming of Age, Big Ass Motherfucking Worm Tree. Level 9, Back to the Beach, Fetch Quest 2, Electric Boogaloo. Level 10, 
Marty to the rescue. I completely forgot this level. Level 11, final battle. Cat fight, but actually though. Now I know this is a children's game, but honestly that's a shit excuse for a game to be bad, so let's talk about it and make fun of it like civilized people. Okay, so this needs to be said right off the bat. Madagascar is literally, sure, I'll help you, but first you gotta complete this arbitrary or unrelated side quest, the game. See, it even says it on the cover. When making a game, the first and most important thing should be nailing your concept. This is a 3D platformer, so why the fuck can't I platform properly? It took me like 20 minutes to make it out of this cave because you miss a single jump and you fall all the way to the bottom. Honestly, the falling part wouldn't be a complaint if the platforming were good enough that it didn't happen like literally 30 times. The game's camera turned slower than a slug covered in glue, and there was no way to adjust the sensitivity. So you're stuck waiting for the camera to turn in the proper direction so you can make a single jump, only to have to turn the camera again to make the next jump. It's bullshit. Now, this might sound like nitpicking, and honestly, I don't know this for sure, but I'm fairly certain that a car can't launch a hippo into the stratosphere. I do like to imagine, though, that this is what New York City traffic is like, because you would think maybe traffic would stop if you saw a fucking hippo trying to cross the street, but maybe in New York they're just so used to seeing this shit on the daily. The same goes for a bunch of penguins hijacking a ship, but if I go into that territory I'm nitpicking movies and this ain't cinema sins. I am worried about the game's E rating though, because there are some strange moments. Like this horny fucking boar who is constantly trying to get it on with Gloria. Hey, yoga you doing? Oh, I'm just trying to get this fruit in. Oh, be still, my foolish heart. Or when Mort calls Melman long neck. <sighs> Great shot, long neck. Now find the neck. I'm pretty sure that's a giraffe slur, but I don't know any giraffes personally, so I don't really know who to ask. Oh wait, the game's rated E10+. Never mind then, it's all fine. But there are still too many small questions to answer. So I'm gonna look at some bigger ones instead. Before deciding if a game based on an animated film is good or bad, you first need to answer a few questions. Number one, does the story lend itself to a video game? In this case, I think not. Madagascar isn't about jumping and collecting fruit and shit. It's about four animals trying to figure out who they are outside of what they were raised to be. That sounds a hell of a lot deeper than it actually is. Number two, does the film have enough societal value to warrant a video game? I'm not even gonna justify that one with an answer. And number three, is the game made to be a game, or is it made to advertise something else? Now weirdly enough, I actually think the argument could go either way in this case. There's an argument to be made that it's just blatant advertising, but I actually think there are some things that make it a bit more than that, which leads me to my next talking point, the mini-games. These are by far the best part of the game. There are three mini-games. Mini Golf, Shuffleboard, and Dance Dance Revolution. I mean, Lemur Rave. Throughout the main game, you collect monkey coins, and you can spend it at the monkey shop, and there you can unlock the mini games. Honestly, just play the tutorial and grab as many coins as possible, and you can pretty much unlock all the mini games right away. Then you never have to play the main game ever again. That's a speedrun hack for you. <laughs> The first game, Mini Golf, is exactly what it sounds like. Fucking Mini Golf. The only reason I really want to talk about it is so I can play this ear bleeding tutorial for you. Hi, I'm Mort, and when I'm not saving the bacon of those New York Giants, I like to tinker on my beautiful tiki golf course. It's the trickiest one on the whole island. In Mini Golf, you hit a ball into a hole. Um. Yeah. Next game. I never realized that shuffleboard is basically curling, but you can't force your friends to sweep. The best part of this game is watching the animals sit on top of life preservers. The final game, and definitely the weirdest, is Lemur Rave. 
a Dance Dance Revolution clone game where you just vibe with lemurs. It's that simple. Get up on your feet, move a bit, and forget the existence of the Madagascar game. Now that I'm finished with the Madagascar game, I think I can finally relax. I can always be thankful that they never made any more of these games. Wait, what? There are seven more Madagascar games? Madagascar carts? Oh god. Send me back to the island. I want a lemur rave! Thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, be sure to subscribe for a new video every single week. If you want to catch me live, I stream three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, over at twitch.tv slash triceratops underscore junior. Um, I play games that aren't Madagascar, so be thankful for that at least. Peace out, y'all. I'll catch you on the flip side.